Welcome back. So much to discuss after Spurs' win over nine men, Liverpool 2-1, they won in the 96th minute. But that doesn't tell half the story. Sit back. Here is the Liverpool manager, Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen, I'm sure there are things in that match that you're frustrated and angry about, but one of them won't be your team's performance. What about the resilience and the effort they've shown in adversity this evening? Yeah, yeah I told you the boys. Football is a result game, we all know that, that's why we are doing it. But if you can't get a result, then it's all about the performance, what can you take from it? And I was never more proud of a team like that today. I never saw a game like this with the most most unfair circumstances, crazy with decisions, wow, how we deal with it, how we stayed in the game, how we fought. And then we score an own goal and after a performance like that, it's like, wow, uh, that's really tough to take, obviously, but I'm really proud. That's. Um, the first red card, but unlucky. So it was not a bad tackle or whatever. He just stepped on the ball and goes over it. I just wonder there if there's an issue of procedure. I don't know if you know this, but it looks like when the referee goes over to, to look at it, the VAR is showing him a still, is showing him a slow motion. So is that the issue there? Not necessarily the referee, but, but what he's being shown. Well, yeah, it looks different in slow motion than in real time. It's just the situation is he steps full throttle on the ball. There's the power in slow motion than in real time. It's just the situation is he steps full throttle on the ball. There's the power. First yellow, you see on, on Jogo is never a yellow card. He hits him at the knee, <laughs> slack, whatever, that's crazy. But he gives the yellow card and then a second then he's off as well. And then we have to, to, to defend with eight outfield players, which is tricky. Did that extremely well. We had with nine, we still created chances with eight. We had still moments. It was absolutely exceptional. Yeah, so the only thing we didn't get today, uh, besides a few decisions, um, good decisions or normal decisions or right decisions, um, was the result, obviously. But with the performance, I created chances with eight. We had still moments. It was absolutely exceptional. Yeah, so the only thing we didn't get today, uh, besides a few decisions, um, good answers, unbelievable what they did, how they fought. Um, pretty special night. Yeah, well, I mean, what do you say to Joel Matip after that? He's one of a number of man mountains who gets you so close to oh. an unlikely point, and then the that end, happens. In the end, it looks a little bit like um, destiny. Somebody had to put the foot there. And it was Joel. He defended outstandingly well today. And here he goes, and then the ball goes over the goal or goes in the goal, and that's unlucky. So that's now um, not a nice outcome. But I think we, I really think we would have deserved the point. We didn't get the point, so um, I heard about more. Uh, more um, bad or worse things in life. That's how it is. We have to. We will have to keep going. We will keep going. But it's. It's the, the, the cards are. Uh, are we, how, how it opens up games and then the goal, the offside goal. Well, I, I'm just going to on the pitch never. I mean, what we saw was broadcast around. It's radio silence. We don't know yet. I believe an explanation is coming. But what have you heard? Oh no no! I didn't hear. I didn't hear anything. It was on, I was just. I, I, I opened. Somebody opened the the, the the smartphone and what is? I don't know. On Instagram, Twitter, wherever somebody put it on. And um, but I, it, it's clear the ball is between Mo's legs. Mm -hmm. They drew the line wrong and they didn't ch touch the the, the the moment. Clear the ball is between Mo's legs. Mm -hmm. They drew the line wrong and they didn't ch touch the the, the the moment. So that's a bit difficult. But I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure. People will speak about that, so it's just so tough to, to 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 deal with it. And I really thought during the game, I'm now relatively calm. We were in the game really, we were really calm. The players were calm, and it's difficult to deal with that. Imagine that your heart rate is 160, 70, 80, and then you see that, and you think, okay, wow, the red card, we got an extra red card, and it's really tricky. And then, so this is today a proper knock for us, obviously, like because of, we, we we would have celebrated the point, like um, I don't know how. Um, now we have no point again. That's not cool. But um, performance, um, how we found in, how we found a way in this game is 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 incredible, and I, I love that so much. Yeah, you said you calm. I'm actually amazed by how calm you are, having been in title races that are decided by the barest of margins. Now I just wonder how damaging can something like this be? No, I will not follow on that path now. That's, that might be funny for you, but for me, it's just, oh, so, for me it's just expensive talking about these kind of things. So that makes no sense. <laughs> what a night for Tottenham fans and Ange Postacoglu joins us pitch side now. Ange, a lot going on in that game. Let's <laughs> yeah. first just reflect on, on the result. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was a fair bit going on. Trying to process it all at the moment. Um, obviously, you know, fantastic to get a win against a, a top-class opponent. Um, and, um, yeah, we, we did it late, which, you know, sometimes you, you, you wish it happens obviously earlier, but, you know, winning late always adds that little bit of spirit and, and belief in the team. So it's against the top side. Um, so good to finish that way. Yeah, and it's something you're at the side have shown that, that they can do a couple of occasions already this season. Mm. How important is that in terms of the, the success of the team going forward? Yeah, it is because invariably even today you know we're going to have some major challenges some obstacles things aren't going to run smooth and in those moments whether that's within games or between games you need to have that spirit belief in the group and i think you know days like today help build that because you know we had to overcome a bit especially early on and then you know even with the extra man extra two men um you know, the way liverpool play they still make it difficult for you so you know i think from my perspective um it's going to be really important we take that belief going forward and how concerning was that to you after the first red card and Liverpool resu was resorted to the two banks of four and Salah on the counter-attack? Was that concerning to you? And then after the second red card and Salah come off, did that allow you just to go full throttle and go all out for the win? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we didn't handle it too well when they went down to 10. I just thought we, we kind of started rushing things and we thought we had, because we had the man advantage, that we could somehow really dominate the game. But... The reality of it is, even with 10 men, Liverpool's game doesn't change. You know, they, they prey on you making mistakes. They prey on, you know, uh, the opposition rushing things and then they have the quality to hit you on the counter-attack. And we didn't really handle it too well, I thought, the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. I thought second half we were better. We started really well. And I thought, you know, the second yellow card, the second red card came from us just constantly putting them under pressure. And then it's hard because they've got some big guys in the box and we probably didn't vary our attacks enough, but... Um, you know, the one we did at the end, you know, it's an own goal, I know, but it's one of the few times we actually flash one across the box. Is that sometimes when you, because obviously the wide men nowadays that come inside, Kuliszewski wants to get it yeah. onto his left foot, the fact you've got Pedro Porro in a position high at the pitch where he can, because no defender wants that ball coming no, across no, like right. it does. Is that something you try to yeah. get the players to do more? Yeah, we work, we're working on it and it's an area we want to keep sort of improving. I thought today, because we, we kind of saw so many bodies in there, we, we avoided that area a little bit and you can't because it's still a difficult area to defend even with bodies in there because you know oppositions don't want to give away penalties they don't want to stick their leg out and and what happens today happened and we just didn't vary it enough but you know look I, I'm, I'm being really picky because this group of players we're we're just in our infancy we're literally crawling before we can walk and the, what they're dealing with at the moment the way they're sort of overcoming the things we've had to has been outstanding you seem really calm, but deep down inside, the start you've made at Tottenham, you must be so happy of how it's gone so far. Yeah, of course, you, you are, but, you know, there's always that little voice inside your head that, you know, you know, all these things can unravel pretty quickly. So, you, and, and, you know, my role within that is to try and just keep pushing the lads and, and, you know, hopefully, I mean, I want them to enjoy it. You've got to enjoy the good times in football and, and what they've done so far, like I said, for, for a very new, young group, um, you know, I'm... I'm I'm rapidly getting the results because it allows me then to keep pushing because they have that belief now. And you, you look at the, the results that you've had at the start of the season, as Jamie was alluding to there, it's the joint best start that Tottenham have said, but you talk about this side of being in its infancy, that they're, they're young players or players, a group of players that are learning together. What do you learn from a, a game like this? I think, especially in that first half, like I said, I think you learn and, and you know, kind of my message to the lads were, you know, at half time at the end was that, you know, we... For us to get better, it's not about doing more sometimes. And I thought, especially individually, I thought when I went down to 10 men, we started individually trying to do more. That's not where the improvement lays for us. The improvement lays in us playing our football better. And like I said, we're just at the start of that. So, you know, that's what you learn from it. There's, there's always lessons. I mean, look, credit to Liverpool. The mentality they have, even with nine men, just to hang in there. I mean, they've got winners in their team, and that's something we need to, you know, learn to, to become as well. And as well as the, the players have done today in, in getting that win, does it make you reassess with this start to the season what you think this first side is is capable of or is it something you always had belief in? Well, no, because I, I haven't really, you know, tried to give us a target for anything, you know. And not even inside? No, you not even inside because it's, it's kind of been my life, Kelly, you know. If, I keep saying to people, if I had goals and dreams, I'd probably surpass them 15 years ago. <laughs> so it kind of shows you if you just keep going and that's what I want to do with this team, I'm not going to tell them how good we can be because, you know, maybe we will achieve that halfway through the year and then what do they do from there? And 
My thing is we just keep improving, you know, keep pushing them and see where it takes us. Seems to be working pretty well so far this season. And thanks so much thanks for coming so. out to Thank talk you. to us. Good Thank to talk you. to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That's all right. just he wants you. to know. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, he said, I'm going to ask him now, live on TV, where's my contract? <laughs> Ignore him. Thank you so much. Cheers. Oh, Desi Adoki joins us now. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for coming out. We've just been hearing about your. We've just been hearing from your your manager about this this group of players and about the the spirit that there is amongst you. How much of that do, do you get from him? Yeah, as the manager said, we are as a team. We are very unique. We there's a good spirit. We fight for each other, and we want to show this on the pitch every every day, every game. You've had a tough. Tough week. Last week you were against Saka, today Salah. How difficult has it been for you? You seem to handle them both in, in your own way and in very different ways. Yeah, this is the, is the game, it's the Premier League. You know, every, every week you face uh, the best striker in the league. So it's a tough challenge for me, but I like it. It's the beauty of the game. And on the flip side, how much are you enjoying playing more for the forward, playing inside the pockets? I'd imagine that's something you haven't done too often in, in your career. Are you enjoying playing for a forward? Yeah, yeah, I'm really enjoying it because as the manager teach me, I have to learn how to play more roles. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I like it and I'm, I hope I'm helping the team and I'm enjoying it. As much as you, you talk about the, the positives of, of the result, the manager was talking about kind of trying to, to get through Liverpool when they went down to 10 and then, and then nine men. How difficult, how did they make it difficult for you? It was, was really difficult because they dropped down a lot, so the, the spaces were so tight, but hopefully, no, we're happy with the win, so we find they got the last minute. And Ange says he doesn't want to talk about targets, he just wants to, to keep on going. Do you think about what Tottenham can achieve this season after what's been a brilliant start? Yeah, I think we have to just keep working hard day after day and every game we have to give everything and try and carry the best. If it's a draw, a win, it doesn't matter. You're on message with the manager then. That's perfect. Destiny, really good for you to come and talk to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Thank well done. you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you, Destiny. And you know, you mentioned that there, Jamie the tough week that he's had coming up against Saka, coming up against against Salah and the way that he's had to deal with it. I mean, that's true pretty much of the whole Spurs side. They've had some tough opponents in this early stage of the, yeah, of the especially season. Especially for him. I mean, he, only, he played against Salah when, when, once he made that tactical change and he put him you know, as, as a central striker to try and alleviate the pressure from Spurs. But he... <sighs> He struggled last week, you can't deny that. It was very difficult against Saka. And then this week, I think he just showed he's got that calmness and authority. And it's almost, it's such a, a quick education to the, what the Premier League's all about, the pace, the intensity of it. But he handles it well. He's getting asked to do a lot of different things. Probably when he played in Italy, he was playing predominantly as a, as a left back, raiding up and down, which he does naturally. Under Hans Postacoglu, you're asked to come into play into midfield, you're coming to get the ball on the half turn. So many different factors to what he wants you to do, so many different challenges. But he seems to be addressing them really well. There's a lot of potential with this young man. He's had some tough moments, make no mistake, but there's been also a lot of positives. Yeah, I think as well, Van de Ven uh, deserves a lot of credit as well, because when Destiny has drifted inside, has drifted further up the field, he's had to come out almost into wide areas and defend wide areas, which no centre-back wants to be doing. So um, Udogi's done very well, but uh, it's been a team effort for Spurs at the back. Andres, I just want to reflect on, on what Ange Postacoglu was saying with you as well, because as somebody who's had that Spurs connection for so long, how much, do you, how, much, how much value do you place on not just what he's doing with the players, but the relationship that he has with the fans and what he's doing at the club? I think that's so important. Um, it's, it's no secret the fans have not been happy with what they've seen in the last few years, style of play wise. I think it was very easy for him to come in and he knows his style of play, he knows he wants to play attacking football. So it was very easy for him to come in and implement that and get the fans on side. But what's impressed me, he's got everyone on side, he's got the, the neutrals on side, he's got the media on side, everyone's he's got everyone hanging out of his back pocket and it's a credit to him and um, I know he's not going to get carried away, um, he's, he's been in the game long enough, but it's been a great start and I'm sure he's desperate for that to continue. Oh, it's been a masterclass in management, man management, how to handle the media, everything. He's the darling right now and he deserves it. They're, they're playing great football, he's transformed how they play. They weren't, they weren't easy on the eye the last few years, Tottenham Hotspur, and he's changed that. He's brought in good players as well. Um, I think James Madison helps that a lot, but there's a calmness, and I think as a the message is any to any football when any footballer is in a dressing room, the manager says, "Look, we're going to attack. We're going to get on the front foot. We're going to cause problems to the other team." That's music to your ears, because especially to a lot of the players here, they haven't had that message for a long time. Spurs fans are embracing it; they love it. Last-minute winners. It couldn't be going any better for him right now. Well, well, one-one between Spurs and Liverpool. Right, let's use every second we've got. So much to talk about. 25 minutes in, let's get straight into it. 
What was your reading of the red card? I okay. think no red card. I think, um, yes, it looks a poor challenge at the end, but I think Curtis Jones gets a little bit of the ball and, of course, the follow-through, the momentum of him stretching for the tackle goes over the top of the ball and, and you know, it collides with... Um, you know, as you Basuma, can see, yeah. collides with Basuma. I think it is the momentum of the, of the challenge, to be honest. I think he does... He is unlucky. But when you slow it down, it looks, it looks, it looks worse awful, than yeah. it is, of course, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't like this at all. I do not like that. The referee going over and a freeze frame on the collision like that when you should be seeing it in real time and then yeah. making the judgments and maybe finishing on that. But, you, oh, I mean, I've got... You know, I've got a huge issue with, with a few decisions today, to be very honest, Dan. I don't like talking about VAR because it's a really good game and there's been loads of chances and two teams are playing really well. I think when a referee goes to the money and he actually sees that free frame, it, it almost makes his mind up yeah, straight away. Yeah, of course. As soon as you see it, it looks, it looks really bad and then you watch it real. Um, and obviously he makes contact and goes over and just, it's, it, I thought he was unlucky. Yeah, he's stretching a bit, so it's not really full-on reckless challenge. So... Um, I was really surprised by it, to be very honest. OK. Son likes playing against Liverpool. Scored four in a row, but yeah. you were out of your seat about the pass from James Madison. It's that man again. But, um, no, you know, in these sort of, like, situations, you know, he's so clever and I think he just waits. And credit to Rosales and the movement's good. Poor de defending from Joe Gomez, I have to say, and, you know, even the pass of his outside his foot to, to Sonny there, you know, an, an easy finish. But you see here again, just waits for his movement. And just the wait a pass, Makai, you know, it's, yeah, Joe Gomez is probably too far out, isn't it? Maybe yeah. because he's been playing centre defence and right back this year. He just gets caught. He's too far away from Matip. You know, the danger ball was inside that exact pass. Let the ball go to Richardson on the touchline. No problem at all. He's not going to take you on. And he got caught out, but it was a lovely goal from Tottenham. Really good goal. And obviously that man against Sonny, another goal. But um, yeah, it comes alive. As soon as the ball goes wide, you see his movement. You know, he's, he's in the box. Yeah. First one to react and, and taps it in the empty goal. But deep into stoppage time, Liverpool are back on terms. Cody Gakpo, he, he didn't do it the textbook way, did he? <laughs> no, I was nearly... Well, I was shouting at him, actually, when, I was when he... You, when I was he, telling everyone he couldn't hear yeah, you. Yeah, when he makes this move, because... I'm just saying, chuck your left foot at it, but actually, it goes away from the goal. But the turning and connection he makes on it is superb, absolutely superb. So, you know, I'm the fool for doubting him. But once he does that, I'm going, no, go towards goal. But then that happens. And Liverpool were right back in the game. And, um, and they deserved it, to be very honest. They look incredibly dangerous whenever they go forward. Yeah, Maka was screaming when he saw that. <laughs> like, when he ran across his body and that. But um, it's, it's brilliant. You know, mm. the, the way he, to, to improvise there and to swivel and, and get that good contact on it. And it's, it's a great finish. Mm. Gak Post now scored in his last three Liverpool starts. Before that, Liverpool thought they'd equalised through Diaz. I mean, we're talking about fine margins again here in the Premier League. Absolutely. And... Firstly, what an amazing finish from him, and he's in really good form, looks really sharp. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Stewart's inquiry on, on, on this decision because for the life of me, it looks on I don't know whether the lines on the pitch are, are wrong, but we haven't seen a line to definitively tell us that he was offside. And I know, because my phone has been ringing off the hook, that there's a lot of disgruntled people in the house because they think that's onside. So... Yeah. You know, if you look at his left leg, it looks onside. Yeah, I think as soon as, soon as he went through, I was like, oh, no. Um, because, especially when you see it there, I was waiting for the line, uh, <laughs> to be honest, and then um, got away with one, definitely there. OK. Home of Tottenham Hotspur in London. I'm Derek Ray, and with me here on the commentary position is Lee Dixon. And we've got Premier League action coming right up. It is Tottenham Hotspur taking on Liverpool. Yeah, really looking forward to this one, Derek. Excite me. Come on, let's see some entertainment. Oh, big chance. Doing the stifling, Toby Alderweireld. Oh, it looked as though he might be through. Not so. Son. And space to cross it. Roberto Firmino. That's a well struck pass. Well, technically. Vinaldom pulls it back. Vinaldom and a significant block following that cross. Harry Kane. 
Oh, that's an interesting pass. And he could cash in. And it's in! 1-0. They breached the defence. Well, here's the goal again, and it's a great ball to put him through. And because he's on his own, he collects himself and he finishes it perfectly past the keeper. Slightly different vantage point in terms of the goal that was scored. And Liverpool get the ball moving again, looking to find a reply to that setback. Roberto Firmino. Oh, nice ball over the top. Oh, a vital interception. Teammate available. He'll be delighted to have won the ball, having made that difficult challenge. Fabier. This is Thiago. And he's in. Still possibilities. And at the second time of asking, it's a goal. The keeper, meanwhile, looks to the heavens. Well, here's the replay. And Derek, a lot of the time, the keeper saved the day. The last line of defence. But he's had a nightmare here. Big mistake. And the goal goes down to him.